Alright, I just wanted to put this video together just to show people how they could put together a transformerless power supply for powering LEDs, charging some nickel metal hydride batteries or nickel cadmiums. Actually, much better for nickel cadmium batteries. But let me just show you what I got together here. Alright. Power feed coming in. This one with the green clip is your neutral line. This right here is your 120 volt AC coming in. That wire goes all the way around. Goes to the Pico fuse. It's a 500 milliamp fuse. You actually sh should be using a 200 milliamp fuse there, but that's all I had. All right. Now from this side of the fuse to the neutral line, I put in a varistor, and what that does, on the voltage of the varistor is 150 and the circuit is 125 and what that's designed to do, that's for surges and spikes it's rated at 150 so when the, if there's a voltage surge that goes higher than 150 what's going to happen, the resistance of that component is going to get less and less to absorb and what it'll do, if the current gets really high it'll actually short circuit and then you'll actually blow, that up, blow this whole thing apart it's like a, a shock absorber for the system and I find it necessary to have, so I added it. Now, after the fuse, it leaves and it goes into this capacitor right here. This is a 250 volt, I think it's a polypropylene or a, I don't know what it is, but it's a heavy duty capacitor. You want to make sure you use at least double the voltage that you're using. So that's rated for 250 and it's a 0.51 UF. Now, the lower that number, the less current's going to go through the circuit. The higher the number, then you have more current going through the circuit. After it leaves there, it goes through, and I have it going into a rectifier, bridge rectifier, which is an overkill because this is a 6 amp. You only need one good for about an amp. goes in there. The outputs, the plus and the minus, go into a capacitor here. Now, I have a 200 volt capacitor because if you disconnect this load right here, which is these three LEDs right now, all right, if you disconnect that, the, the current on this capacitor is going to, actually the voltage is going to climb to 168 volts because there's no load and you're letting it build. And the 168 comes from 1.4 times the AC voltage. And that's how it becomes that. If you just use the rectifier with nothing on it and the voltage won't be clean, it'll be 123 like the uh, AC mains. But when you put the capacitor that smooths the voltage out makes it a really good power supply for DC current but it also makes it go 1.4 times the AC current that was coming in now this isn't a problem because the current's so low the circuit only puts out 20 milliamps with that capacitor on it alright now you can see all three are on and it's drawing right now 19.7 milliamps you could add 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. It doesn't make a difference. They're all going to light up equally, and it's not going to affect the brightness because the current has to flow through each one. So you're having that flow of 20 milliamps just going through. I mean, each one might s slightly drop it, like maybe 2 milliamps. I mean, a 2 tenths of a milliamp because there is resistance in these. But overall, I added 5. I had 8 of them here, and it didn't change. It was still 19.8 and they were just as bright. Now on the other leg that goes from the alternating current, you have this one coming in. That's from the line. All right. Now the neutral goes to the other side of the rectifier and it goes through this 100 ohm resistor and what that's there for is to limit the current when it rushes into the circuit. Limits the inrush current. So this circuit right here is an excellent circuit. I've used it now for about eight months 10 hours a day in night lights never failed just make sure your co components are right make sure you have the proper voltage ratings the varistor always helps and have to have the fuse it's a very dangerous circuit you don't want to touch it while it's on this side you could actually touch but I still wouldn't gamble because if this lead comes off that'll charge to 170 and like I said you can use it for charging uh, batteries too, little nickel metal hydride and little nickel cadmiums works great. Now this one here is a smaller value than that one. It, when I have this one in that place 
this would drop to about 15.9 milliamps. Now if I take this one out and I put a 1 UF instead of a 0.5, this will become 40 milliamps. And I'll smoke these LEDs out. And I'll also probably start to overheat this resistor right here. When you, start, when you get more than 20 milliamps, you want to go from a half watt to a 1 watt. But that's about it. Now you know how to put it together. It's very simple. Whole circuit right there with jumper wires. You could also regulate the circuit if you wanted, but it's a little more work involved. And you'd have to take the positive right here coming out of the bridge rectifier, going to the capacitor. It goes to the light, the positive on the LED. So you would take the positive off the LED, and you would hook up a 3.1 volt um, Zener. But you'd also have to use a resistor in series with the Zener. And then you could regulate it that way. But that Zener will get hot if you overload it. Remember, keep a load on the circuit at all times, otherwise you will build very high voltage in that capacitor. Okay, and there's another way you can do this. If you just want to use it for lighting up LEDs and not for DC power, what you do is the circuit stays the same with the varistor and the Pico fuse capacitor. All right, now on this circuit, because you're not going through the work in the circuit of transforming to DC, you're going to get a little bit more current out of the existing capacitor. So if you use this on a DC circuit, you get a little bit less out of it because you got to go through the transformation and everything. So right now I kept everything the same. You take the LEDs, all right? You wire them back to back. You take the anode of one side and you connect it to the cathode and you take the cathode connect it to the anode and you have the two legs that are twisted together and you just put the AC current through that the flickering you can't even tell like right now can you see flickering it's 60 times a second so you're not going to really see it it's hard to tell if there's any flickering at all which I don't see any but it works good you have to have this resistor right here it's 800 between 500 and 1000 ohms because when you plug the circuit in you have the rush of current that flows into the circuit and these diodes, uh, LEDs, just do not like it. They will blow out. So make sure you have a between 500 and 1000 ohm resistor there. That's it. Power coming in to the Pico fuse. After the Pico fuse, you got your varistor. After the Pico fuse, it goes into the capacitor. Make sure it's 250 or higher if you're using 110. And it goes into the one side of the LEDs and on the other side that flows out to the resistor for the inrush current and to your line. That's it. I'm drawing 22.5 milliamps.